Okay, we're going to interrupt our regularly scheduled programming to bring you the following nappings. Uh, I got a box from a friend of mine, uh, Vernon. Thank you very much if you're watching. He uh, had a box of Rainy Buttes sent to me from Kentucky Flintworks. Uh, these are big chunks and um, all he asked was for me to spall some of this stuff and make some points so we're going to do that okay let's see and the box uh, that's sent from Kentucky Flintworks uh, double boxed and well taped and my post office is notorious for trashing these boxes right but this one survived in pretty good shape all right so let's let's take out one of these uh, one of these chunks and see what we can do I'm looking for one that's pretty bad so I can spoil the worst one. Let's see. Well, it does not look like there's anything really bad in here, so let's pick one that looks difficult to spoil. This one will actually be difficult uh, to keep in one piece. Could try that one. Let's see. Let's see now. Yeah, this is a, definitely the most difficult because I don't know if I'll be able to keep that in one piece. What else? Let's see. I could solve that problem just by breaking it in half and not worry about it, but I won't do that. I'm gonna try to whittle it down. In the process, in the process, taking off flakes that I can make points out of. Okay. I'll be hitting in this way. Now, rainy buttes is easy to work, so. I think that's why Vernon sent this to me. He said he's going to be working exclusively with the Rainy Buttes. See if he can make anything out of them. Out of these types of spalls. Alright, let's see. <clears throat> Do I recommend this for new guys? This type of material? Yeah, this is pretty good stuff. It's petrified wood or some kind of clay or something weird, right? but it naps really well. It looks like uh, chocolate, right? It has a dull appearance, but don't let that fool you. It naps very well. Got some fancy copper hammers. Let's see. I already tried using the smaller one, and I only one napping session on a couple of spalls, and I've already got it mushroomed on one side. Well, let's see how this works. Am I worried about snapping the whole thing? No, it's pretty thick, so I'm not that I'm not worried. 
Should I be swiping or gouging these flakes? I typically just gouge them out, you know, like this. I don't swipe when I hit. Swiping gives you thin flakes. I want them on the robust side. You know, thin but not too thin. Let's see. A lot of you guys are going to want to know how heavy is those are those hammers. Okay, so grams first. Three eighty one. Pounds and ounces, 13 and 3 eighths ounces on that one. It's got an aluminum handle, so it's a little bit heavier than wood, right? So the bigger one, one pound, 14 ounces and one quarter, so almost two pounds. And then grams. 858 okay so it's got internal flaws every once in a while so I got to be careful I'm holding it up high so I can get more control over it I don't need to hit very fast, although I probably should so I don't get these little short flakes. Okay. Hit a little bit faster, but it's a, it naps a lot like obsidian. You don't need much effort. Not much effort at all. Yeah, just like obsidian, it, it's easily scooped out. If you don't hit it right, it'll just scoop out a flake and it won't be long and nice. So a little bit more energy into the strike. You got a little bit of an overshot there. I can make something out of the little blocky pieces, but it's best to have the flat ones. Now the, the Levelois technique is the best one for producing flat flakes, which means it's, a, it's like a zigzag technique, Levelois, or Lavawa as they say over across the pond. Let's see, I could try to take another flake but then they start to curve. Uh, I do have some curved flakes in that pile. I'm trying to get mostly flat ones. See, right now I can biface it. I can go around the whole thing. At least in theory. Yeah, scoop that one out. it a little bit better I guess and then it won't scoop out as easily and if I take a thicker flake it won't scoop out that one 
initiated kind of high. I think there was some internal flaws. See, I don't want to get too many of these curved flakes. I want them flat, you know what I mean? So I'm zigzagging wherever I can and trying to be creative also uh, where I can, you know, trying to figure out where I can hit to get long flakes. This is dicey, but I got one. Alrighty. I lost a little off the tip on that one, but I think it was worth it. I need to flatten that out so I can get another good strike on this. Might be able to get a good flake here. Yes. Might be able to get a new a good flake off the back side here. Didn't go deep enough. I went real deep on that one. Yeah, if it, if it didn't nap as easy as it does, I might have messed that one up, but that was good. Now, it's starting to get thin. This is when it gets riskier than riskier. Switch over to the smaller hammer. Very easy to overshoot this stuff. Most of the time, I've, it felt like they were going to overshoot there every single time, but it looks like there's either internal flaws or the strikes just are losing power or something. I think there's internal flaws in here. There's a crack right here. Yeah, without knowing how deep these cracks go, there really isn't any strategy. It's just uh, go for it and hope for the best. Now, if I knew how deep that goes, I could try a strategy. Uh, 
overall, just uh, the, the only strategy I can think of is just to try to wipe that off little by little, you know. Skin that off and get deeper and deeper without losing the bifacial shape. But I think what I'm going to do is before I tackle that, I need to get rid of some off the the back side here. And if there's any flaws up here, hitting this side will pop off the tip and it'll solve that problem. Now there's Cortex, which is not notoriously unpredictable. Yeah, the only thing I can compare it to is obsidian. Obsidian without the gloss or sharpness. And a lot of internal flaws. These kind of things. So why would I recommend this for beginners? It's only because it naps easy. And it's it's a cool uh, cool stone. You know, that brown color is pretty cool. You know, Georgetown is gray, but you know gray is kind of on the uh, boring side as far as colors go. So now it's just zigzagging. That was nice. See obsidian does that kind of stuff too. Uh, yeah. And this is raw, it's not heat treated, and you don't need to heat treat this either. Okay, so hopefully the, those cracks don't go in too far because I'm going to remove some of this mass here and uh, hopefully it won't get too thin it won't get too thin where I, where I won't be able to skin that off let's see let's try using a Try using my billet. Yeah, I'm, I'm tempted to not thin this out yet and just go for this first. I'll probably lose some off the tip, but that hurts. Uh, let me try something. Still there. Yeah, every time you hit this stuff, it'll do something.
Nice. Okay, so. Yes, I am losing some off the side, but I got to maintain the convexity on here, or at least flat, right? So I, I'm going to lose some off the bottom here anyway. Just trying to keep this flat or slightly convex. While I'm trying to thin it down to get past that crack. Yeah, you gotta brace it and support it a lot like obsidian. It feels like something's gonna snap off at any time. Alright, I'm gonna drive a flake into there and see if that takes care of it. It's dicey because then if I get this very thin, I'm gonna have a hard time removing the turtle back. Maybe I should try thinning just slightly here first before I do that one. Because this will be harder if this is thinner on this side. This will be more difficult if, if this gets very thin there. Because i got to hit it fairly hard. And you hit it hard in the middle and it's weak, it'll snap. It's already weak from the crack. So I think the sooner I do that, the better. Well, let's see. Okay, that's as thin as I dare to go. Now let's go over here. Yeah, every time you hit it, something happens, and that was not that good. Yeah, it might have been a little bit too aggressive, but still. I see some issues in there. Yeah, it was probably a little bit too aggressive, that strike. I might have been able to preserve it if I had done it just slightly less force. See, I, I did get, scoop out quite a bit of that. A little bit more than I should have. Okay. Still got a good little biface out of it. All right, so that is a lot different than that big piece I started with. But I did get some long-ish pieces. This one looks like it might have a flaw in it. So that might snap right there across that. Maybe not. It's got flaws on this side. Let's see. How much time do I got left on this one? I'll try another one. a little bit easier it's because some of the angles are nice 
it has it has layers in it, right? Um, it's best to go with the layers. Like it's best to, if I remove some spalls off, following these layers, especially when it gets to this area, as it seems that the voids are going this way. It's best that I spall into those voids in this direction than it is to try to go across the whole piece. I need to figure out how to shape this. Other than with a file or my belt sander. I hate using the belt sander. Maybe just a bigger file. Get a big old file for this stuff. There's no flaws in it, but it does break in half easily like obsidian does. Now just if I make it so it'll fly off clear without touching it, maybe it'll work better. Yeah. Although it's gonna be hard making something out of that. Let's see. But I need to not touch the anywhere along here. That's better. Well, even with not touching it, I still snapped it. That would have been nice if it was intact. I'm going to come in from this side now. I don't want to hit here because uh, that'll probably smash away the length that I might get if I'm if I uh, stop doing that face and just come over here and work my way into that face from the other side. I might be able to preserve that piece. Well, that was just light, holding it light, not pressure at all. The thicker they are, the less curved they are, so... Uh, you got to try to strike a balance between what you want and... Uh, you know, thick pieces, you don't get too many thick pieces, but they're straighter and flatter. You get a lot more thin pieces, but they're going to be more curved. As the flakes start coming off, they're going to be more and more curved. But the thinness, I can get a bunch of small points. That's not the, that's not the hard part. The hard part is trying to get large points off of these spalls. Why did I do that? Just to get rid of this bump. There's not much you can do with that. That's just one of those things. I can get a point out of it, but it's going to take. It's going to take attacking that turtle back with some gusto, and then everything else is really thin. So these are some of the hardest flakes to work. So oh well, let's see. And I realize this material is some money, right? There's some money involved in this. I am keeping that in mind, trying to get as many nice spalls off of this as possible.
I was trying to come at it from that side. But I overshot it and clipped off the bottom, so I was not able to preserve it. So from here on in, uh, I can, I'm can. i going to put this back in the box and, and work some of these flakes here. Okay, on the next segment. Okay, so I'm going to pick some of these flakes to work in the next series of videos. Like I said, we're going to interrupt our regularly scheduled programming of the uh, glass adventures, glass snapping. Some of you remember back in the old days of TV, they would break into the program and say something like, uh, we interrupt this program to bring you the following messages or the following public service announcement or whatever. That's how old I am. And then afterward, afterward it would say, and now we return you to your regularly scheduled program. Now, can you make hunting points out of this stuff? Yes, yes, yes. Does it stay as sharp as obsidian? I don't know. Obsidian gets pretty dull pretty fast. So it's, it's going to be sharp. Sharp enough. Turtlebacks are not that hard to remove from this stuff. Vernon mentioned he has copper tools. Okay, so I'm trying to use copper, although I'm not going to be able to use copper indirect percussion because I don't have one right now. I don't have a copper indirect percussion tool. So I'm going through and I'm looking for turtlebackish type spalls and fixing them. If this looks like it might be similar to Horse Creek or Buffalo River. It is uh, somewhat similar to that heat treated stuff. Yeah, somewhat. Yes, yes. That would be, probably that would be a good comparison between the heat treated Buffalo River or whatever and the obsidian. Oops. That came off of there. I could just... I could just break that right off so I don't have to worry about it. Now if I had spent the money on it, would I be doing the same thing as I'm doing now? Because... Uh, Vernon sent me this stuff as a gift. Uh, yeah, I try not to think about the money when I'm napping. So yeah, I, I'm napping this as I would my own stuff. Definitely. Have I gone through lots of material? Oh yes. Yeah, there's some there's some internal issue stuff going on. That wasn't too bad though. If I had been a little more careful, hiding sight is 2020. 
if I had been a little more careful, I might be able to, might have been able to preserve that. But yeah, this is the way I would nap my own stuff. Now what material is most efficient for size of pieces in comparison to money spent? Probably Keokuk or a heat treated Burlington shirt is going to give you the best yield for the price. Some high quality heat treat would probably be the, in that category. The best yield for the price. Some type of common stone that doesn't work well at all for flint napping unless it's heat treated. Okay. Go through and unturtle baccarize. Un unturtle baccarize, yeah. Get rid of all the turtle backs. Oops. Very easy to overshoot. Is you know, there's always that question: is, Can overshots be advantageous? Come on, it's got to be some. Sometimes when the overshot's good. Nope. <laughs> Sorry. I can't think of a single instance where overshot is good. Just like I can't think of any instance where step fractures are good. I don't know, scoop outs, those are tricky. You kind of have to attack those slowly. Yeah, like this too. I don't want to attack that as a, right now with a direct percussion on a thin edge like this. It's best to create platforms that can be hit with indirect percussion in order to preserve the width. That's what I'm worried about on this piece. Curved, it's like a bottle bottom. You know, same type of issues. You, know, you gotta take off material from this bottom side here and get try to get it flat or slightly convex. Same issues with the bottle bottoms. You're gonna lose some length on curved flakes. All right, so what do I do with all these other little pieces? I can make miniature arrowheads. I'm a miser, I save all these except for the ones that are really bad. This one, I don't want to mess with it. These I can break up into smaller pieces, hopefully. Sometimes it's a shame because it's really nice quality. Not much I can do. I can do, you know, make a little miniature arrowhead out of this. Whoop! Out of this stuff. But most of these little pieces uh, just get thrown into a box, and uh, maybe maybe I'll get around to napping little stuff out of these. Well, yeah, what I do is, if it's my own stuff, I go back and I un unturtle back a lot of this stuff. If I can, that was a reverse hinge.
Can you see? Yeah, I'm just tossing the, the usable stuff over there. Uh, I can't be too nonchalant with this stuff. <clears throat> At some point I gotta start being really careful. But you know you gotta get used to what the limits are on the stone, you know, you can't be too shy about it. I gotta know what what the, what the break limit is on these what I can get away with. So break a few in the beginning up here, uh, spall a couple of these nodules, get the feel for it, and then do the rest of the box. Sometimes I do the box in one day and sometimes I wait. You know, I may, I may nap all this stuff first all of it first and then get into the rest of the box or I might nap a lot of these nodules down to bifaces it all depends on the, the amount of time I have and the uh, mental clarity or the mood that I'm in I've got a crack here <clears throat> If I'm in a bad mood, I won't touch the the majority of the material. I'll just try to get a feel for it. <clears throat> and don't do what I'm doing, jumping from torture chert to obsidian to uh, rainy buttes, back to obsidian and probably a torture chert video again. Don't jump around like that. Don't try these thing, these techniques at home, boys and girls. It'll mess you up. I do it because I'm used to it. Right? When I'm at a nap-in, someone will hand me something. Hey, try this. Does this work? And I nap it. It's a certain, it's a certain consistency, right? Another guy comes up, hey, try this. It's totally different consistency. Consistency. I try to nap it. Da, da, da. Again, this and that, this and that, this and that. If, if the word gets out that I'm doing a bunch of stuff, they'll come over and they'll give me what they got. And it's all going to be different. So in, one, in the space of about five hours, I'll, I'll work like 15 different types of material. And normally nappers don't do that don't go through that sort of thing it's very fatiguing and you would think that it's not very you think it's exciting right it never gets boring but yeah it gets boring uh, napping inconsistent material one minute it's one thing the next minute it's another thing It gets old. This is like the worst turtle back. See, and with easy to nap materials, this is what you get sometimes. You just take it for granted that the, the platform is going to work and all you get is a scoop out. So the platforms don't always work. You know, when you expect too much from them, from the platforms. But you can stretch it quite a bit with this stuff. You can seemingly pull a flake out from your magic hat where it doesn't seem like you'd be able to. And you can't depend on that that weird stuff 
I was hoping to split this, but all I got was a weird termination. Not too bad. I probably should have done that before I tried that one. Come on. There we go. Yeah, this is has this had some issues anyway. This is just to see how what I can get away with. And I can get away with a lot. I can probably pull a point out of that one. Okay. What I'm going to do at the end of this exercise is count all these pieces and I'm going to say one out of four is going to be, well, I'll do one out of three is going to be a failure and give you an idea how many points that I can get out of this stuff. Just roughly, a rough estimate. One out of three is going to be a failure uh, for, for various reasons. Uh, one being internal flaws in the stone. My usual is a one out of four breakage. Just due to human error. If there's flaws in the stone, then it's one out of three. If the stone is very, very difficult, then it's one out of two. You're only going to be able to make stuff out of half of the material that you got. Or half the bifaces if it's really, really a bad stone. Oops. Does that qualify as bad stone when it does stuff like that? Yeah, kind of, sort of. Yeah, you gotta be careful. I'm, I'm uh, learning the limits of the stone Direct percussion is good and all that, but indirect is better. And why am I using direct percussion uh, to get these little bifaces knocked out or the turtle backs removed? It's because it's very efficient. Well, isn't efficient better? No, it's not really better uh, in terms of preserving material. Uh, it's efficient in the time. There's different uh, different ways to judge efficiency. Time, uh, quality of the finished product. Um, Amount of breakages, what kind of efficiency are we looking for? I'm looking for time wise right now. Direct percussion is efficient in terms of time. Yeah, I'm, I might break a little bit more than I would with indirect percussion, but it save some time all right and sometimes what I do is I screen these so that anything half inch or less goes through the screen, I save the rest. 
Uh, some of it, I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to count up these flakes and I'm going to say one out of three would be a point. I mean, uh, one out of three is a failure. Two out of three will be points. Um, let me see. Actually, I'm going to not count stuff below an inch. Well, inch and a half, two inches. Yeah, stuff like this. Let me see. I'm not going to use stuff less than an inch and three quarter. I'm not going to count. I'll probably use it maybe for something in the future, but inch and three quarter or less, I'm not going to count. This is just uh, squeaking by. Okay. That's an inch and three quarter. It's just barely squeaking by. Okay, let's see. One, two, three, All right, I counted 49 pieces. Let's just say 40. Because working flakes like this, I might be able to get some stuff out of them. Of course, they didn't make these out of this material, um, but you, I think you get the idea. I'm not going to make too many of these little ones. All right, so 49 might take out nine of them. Take out seven, so 42. All right. So if I lose uh, one out of, what was it, one out of four from the 42, um, lose 10 of them or whatever, I can make 30 points. And then if I lose one out of three out of 42, uh, let's see. Um, 14. I lose 14 out of 42. 38. Or no, 28. Okay, so it, somewhere between 28 and 30 points out of those uh, two spalls right 28 to 30 points and then maybe a little bit here from this stash maybe a few more 
out of this pile. What kind of points do you make out of those? Just little Cahokia style points. And yes, you can break it that easily. Uh, that's how easy this stuff breaks. It's like very similar in strength to obsidian. Chert does not break this easy. All right, chert does not break that easy. So uh, that's something to keep in mind. You're not going to make drills out of this stuff. At least I hope you're not. You didn't buy it to make drills, I don't think. I don't think people buy this stuff to make drills out of. Anyway, okay, so that'll give you an idea. All right, let's see. I'm gonna try to, uh, I'm gonna try to find the longest piece. Okay, so six in the three inch range and then two in the four inch range. Everything else is less. Seven in the three inch range. Nine. Nine in the three inch range. This one here is two and a half inches long, so that's what that is. You know, all these pieces you can make this size. Maybe not that side. Maybe this is the four inch range. Four inch. Yeah. You can make that. Let's see. And then make a bunch of these out of those up there. Maybe not that style, but I think you get the idea, right? These are the ones from that batch. Some of these from this batch. And some of these from those two. And of course, I'm going to lose one out of four minimum, maybe one out of three. Okay. So, I hope that gives you an idea. I'm going to nap one of these longer ones on the next segment. Okay.